Prisons. Their basic function in society has been cemented since their invention. Housing for the wrongdoers in the world. Not only are they responsible for housing these prisoners, but they are also responsible for their well-being. However, a deeper purpose lies behind prisons. Are they to punish prisoners for their crimes or to rehabilitate them so they can be an active and healthy member of society? This is the crux of the debate around prisons in the 20th century. To rehabilitate or to punish. To begin to delve into this debate, let us start in the early 20th century and look at the prison conditions then. At this time, the prison system was much more about punishment than rehabilitation. For example, in an article by William R. Muth and Tom Gehring, the Correctional Education slash Prison Reform Link, they say that the purpose of one prison at the time was to, quote, punish the criminal and remove him from society for as long as possible. This is also corroborated in the same article by numerous examples of appalling prison conditions. Muth and Gehring say that one prison in New York had, quote, changed little since 1825 with appalling cell conditions and rampant vermin. This disregard for the prisoner's well-being is a form of punishment for the prisoner. The Changing Career of the Correctional Officer by Don Josie and Dale Secrest. Sociologists of the time thought of prison guards as, quote, hacks, and historical records revealed that they were, quote, unquote, punitive. Despite these proponents of punishment at the time, a sizable portion of people supported prison rehabilitation. In the aforementioned article by Muth and Gehring, they described the acts of one such reformer, Thomas Mott Osborne. Osborne, a prison warden, based his reformation of the Sing Sing prison in New York on the idea of human dignity by delegating responsibility to prisoners over prisoners, which provided a, quote, correctional education through a system known as the Mutual Welfare League. As the years progressed in the 20th century, so did the number of those who supported rehabilitation. This is seen by the name change of the American Prison Association to the American Corrections Association in 1954, as stated on the company's website. Unfortunately, enacting reform through rehabilitative efforts is easier said than done. According to the article, Is Prison Rehabilitation Successful? by Harry Westover in 1958, the correctional efforts of many prisons at the time were rather ineffectual, despite the optimism of the prison officials. Westover mentioned a lack of help of integrating the released prisoners into society as one of the great impediments to true rehabilitation. Richard Singer, a writer for the 1970 Catholic University Law Review, shared Westover's sentiments. In his article, Prison Conditions, an Unconstitutional Roadblock to Rehabilitation, Singer pointed out the appalling conditions of prisons in the 1970s. The physical conditions, violence, and psychological trauma of prisons, Singer claimed, impede the proper rehabilitation of those who must suffer through such inhumane treatment. Fortunately, the 1960s saw an improvement in prison conditions due to the prisoners' rights movement, which was a socio-political movement aiming to ensure the basic human rights of prisoners. This movement, described by James B. Jacobs in his 1980 article, The Prisoners' Rights Movement and Its Impacts, 1960-1980, saw a number of reform efforts by the public and led to Supreme Court cases, such as Cooper v. Pate, which ruled that prisoners do have certain rights under the law. This movement reflects society's stake in a functional, humane prison system. Such a system with rehabilitative benefits serves society by creating safer public due to lower recidivism rates, as well as upholding society's general moral standards. As society progressed into the 1980s, the gains of prison reformers regress, as seen in the 1984 article, Work as an Avenue of Prison Reform, by Francis T. Cullen and Lauren F. Travis. They acknowledged that, during the 1980s, America's politicians seemed to be moving backward to be leaning more towards punishment than rehabilitation. 
This backward shift in thinking was marked by the dramatic increase in America's prison population, which began in the 1980s and continued to increase into the 21st century, as stated by the Sentencing Project in 2013. Nevertheless, the general public still seemed to view rehabilitation within prisons as important, as well as the guards. The guards held remarkably high support rehabilitative ideology, generally preferring to identify as correctional officers over guards, according to a 1989 article by Francis Cohen, Faith Lutz, Bruce Link, and Nancy Travis Wolfe entitled, The Correctional Orientation of Prison Guards. Do officers support rehabilitation? The 2010 documentary, Learning From Our Mistakes, also makes an important point in stating that the point of prisons is to create, quote, fewer victims. In this way, victims and their families hold a great stake in the issue of rehabilitation and punishment. Nevertheless, the 2003 article, Point of View, Prison, to Punish or to Reform, explains the conflicting opinions of victims and their families. For example, Diane Clemens of the group Justice for All points out that murdered victims have no voice in order to defend her position that prisoners must be punished in order to provide justice to those who have been wronged. Overall, victims and their families are likely to support a prison system which punishes offenders while also providing rehabilitative services. With 26.1 out of every 1,000 Americans becoming victims of violent crime, according to 2012 data from the Bureau of Justice, prison victims and their family represent a major stake in the debate on prison. Similarly, the families of prisoners also represent a major stakeholder in the debate on punishment versus rehabilitation. In the article, Addressing the Social Needs of Families of Prisoners by James Jorgensen, Santo Hernandez, and Robert Warren, they discuss the negative effect of incarceration on the families of offenders, especially the negative effect on the education of the children of offenders. With such a negative effect, families of prisoners are best served by a functional prison system which rehabilitates inmates so as to return them as safe, contributing members of society. This change of attitude of favoring rehabilitation rather than punishment has greatly improved prison conditions. According to an article released by the Bureau of Justice Assistance in 2012, many states have reported a reduction in recidivism rates, citing various reports at rehabilitating rather than merely punishing the prisoners as having caused this reduction. This increase in rehabilitative efforts hopefully will provide prisoners with optimal chances at reformation and reintegration into society and will improve the safety of society as a whole.